great the wonder of the heavens and the timeless beauty of the night. How great, then how great the Creator. And it stars like priceless jewels far beyond the reach of kings. Bow down for the shepherd guiding him home. But how many eyes are closed to the wonder of this night? Like pearls hidden deep beneath a dark stream of desires. But like dreams vanish with the call to prayer and the dawn extinguishes night. Here too are signs. God is the light. God is the light. How great the beauty of the earth and the creatures who dwell on her. How great, then how great the Creator. As its mountains pierce the clouds high above the lives of men, weeping rivers for thousands of years. There were no centers, there were no mosques. Uh, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, uh, I don't believe that there was even an, or an organized uh, Friday prayer. Uh, the leader of the Arab and the Muslim community uh, when I came here in 1972 was uh, Dr. Nouri Al Khaldi, who was affiliated with the Middle East Studies Center. Uh, he and Lamia were uh, two great individuals, their contributions to uh, the Arab and the Muslim community. And at that time, really, there was uh, there was nothing that was identified clearly as the Muslim community separate from the Arab community. It's, uh, both of them were fairly small, and so the, the tendency to uh, stratify them uh, was, not, uh, was not there and was not an issue. But Nuri uh, was uh, a unifying uh, force among uh, the Arabs in this. And, uh, the bulk of the, if the Muslims, if you want to uh, refer to a Muslim community, uh, were all foreign students. So in essence, uh, there were very, very few uh, Muslims that, uh, that are actually either uh, American citizens or even permanent residents here. Uh, the bulk of uh, the established Arab community uh, was uh, on the Christian side, uh, uh, Christian Arabs. And, uh, and there were several uh, people, uh, some I remember them, some I don't. Uh, but uh, perhaps the most prominent of them is Dr. Khalil Izar, who is uh, still alive and still well. Uh, there was a Syrian-Lebanese club. Uh, and. Uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, Arab churches, uh, Syrian churches. Uh, so in essence, the community uh, centered around uh, social activities uh, sponsored by established uh, Arab Christian uh, uh, churches. And uh, the Syrian Lebanese club, uh, which over the time many of us wanted to change its name to the Arab American club, uh, we did succeed in changing it, but it reverted back to the Syrian Lebanese club, and I believe it's still uh, there. Uh, and, uh, but Nuri, uh, on the Portland State campus, where uh, the bulk of uh, the foreign Arab students uh, moved around, uh, Nuri was uh, the unifying force. Uh, so in essence, uh, Nuri's contributions uh, are enormous. Uh, uh, Nuri single-handedly uh, held whatever you want to call the Muslim community at that time together. Uh, 
he conducted marriage ceremonies. He uh, officiated in uh, funerals. Uh, there weren't many of these. You realize when you don't have an established Muslim community, uh, you don't have older people in it. So funerals were uh, not something that's happening uh, uh, every day or every other day or even for that matter every year. So. Uh, but uh, whenever uh, such things happened, whether it, they are marriages or uh, uh, or, wed or uh, funerals, uh, Nuri was uh, the person uh, that uh, that was there, and I, uh, in a sense, I uh, I found it a great honor that. Uh, that when he died, I was the one who officiated in uh, uh, his and his wife's funerals, so on and so on. Uh, but he, uh, he was a great man. And, uh, and I think uh, when the history of this community is uh, written in detail, uh, Nuri's contribution uh, to its beginnings uh, will be a, a major chapter in that history. So. And he came to Portland, and just like that, he fell in love with the city. He said it's like Islamabad. He called me because of the trees and the river and the mountains, and he said, you know, Allah has given us all this and everything that you can find in Jinnah are here. When I came to Portland, the my only place that I could associate with was a, a place of... A, Friday prayer that used to be in a rented apartment close to, uh, to University of Portland, uh, I'm sorry, Portland State Campus there at that time. The sad part when we came here was because we look at the phone book and we try to find uh, Islamic Center, there was none. Prophet ﷺ came to Medina and he built institutions in Medina, took Medina as his own. All we do is follow his example. We have an agenda that every Sunday we have to read Quran for the children, that's important. And then uh, we have socials and uh, 30 minutes. And then the, when the children were starting, we don't have any Islamic school at all, nothing. And so the only way was we have to do it in my house. So we have a basement, the boys were there and upstairs, were, it's all volunteer. Dr. Khalid Khan started and we got volunteered to teach them and I offered my house. The goal that time was to provide Islamic environment for our children growing up as American Muslim. That was the goal. How we are going to raise them uh, to emphasize our Islamic culture. So it was a responsibility to provide the environment and the education of course. This head of the writing committee of this one textbook in California uh, received a very negative backlash from uh, the American Women Jewish Committee called Hadassah. And when people asked, well, what is wrong with this, with this textbook? Why are you fighting it? Why are you, why are you fighting that the district not uh, adopt this textbook? And the uh, people from Hadassah said, well, because it gives a favorable picture of Islam. What was the favorable picture of Islam? That Islam had uh, influenced many European thinkers during the pre-Renaissance period, uh, the universities in Spain and, and Italy and France, and that many of the sciences uh, were, were advances by Muslim thinkers and uh, that there was a lot of borrowing between Europe and uh, the Middle East during the uh, medieval times. That isn't uh, leaning back and giving a favorable picture. These are facts. But here is an example of where a conflict outside the United States, such as the Arab-Israeli conflict, can come and influence things that are going on 
inside the United States. He then came home and he said, you know, Mama, uh, that same teacher said that Muslims have to kill people in order to get to heaven. Isn't that racism? So I asked him for his book. He gave me his, his textbook and I was going through it. Allah was supposed to be the name of a God. And uh, of course, Allah is the Arabic word for God. And that Christian Arabs and Jewish Arabs use the term Allah. And uh, there was information about the hadith that was incorrect. The hadith are the traditions that have been ascribed to the Prophet Muhammad, not the actual words. Uh, there were mistakes having to do with the Hajj and with Mecca and with Jerusalem. So these are the kinds of mistakes that we, uh, Najda members back in California, also encountered when we were going through the books. Just completely uh, uh, erroneous or distorted information. So in California, what we did was we started a project that became a book called the Arab World Notebook. And it would take certain topics, such as Islam, Arab Christianity, the Palestinian issue, Jerusalem, the role of women, uh, the um, contributions, Islamic contributions to Western civilization. And we put those into lesson plans with resources, with lots of audio visuals. And we began to do outreach and distribute them. So we cannot leave this responsibility on our non-Muslim brothers and sisters that it is their responsibility to learn about us. It is our responsibility to reach out. And I'm so happy that when I did meet with a round table from my son's middle school here in, in Oregon uh, 10 years ago, uh, I gave them a copy of that book. And the organization, MET, to, to which I belong, was very instrumental in making sure that we go out to the schools, that we do presentations. Well, I, I, I feel very good about the MET, actually. I think uh, that uh, the MET has put the Muslims on the map in Portland, in my opinion. Uh, because uh, of the fact that even though we have a, a significant number of Muslims uh, present there, uh, they have been living in their own cocoon and this amity has really uh, integrated the Islam in the society here. You have done an excellent job in educating non-Muslims about Islam in, um, in uh, reaching out for political concern. Alhamdulillah, this, is, this has been uh, I didn't realize it was 10 years already. This, is, this has been, mashallah, a, 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 a very, very good thing. The terrible and tragic events of uh, September 11, 2001, uh, in reality, uh, brought to the Muslim community here the the urgency and uh, the importance of soul searching to see how they could become more unified and uh, and more understanding of uh, what is their role as uh, as American living in an American society. So while it was a terrible event, but uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, no matter how terrible an event is. <laughs> If you look for some positive thing to come out of it, you can always find uh, something. And I am certainly hoping that the positive that will come out of 9-11, at least for the local uh, Muslim communities, uh, is the fact that uh, they will become more aware of their, uh, the centrality of uh, their American citizenship and their uh, role as a productive citizens in, uh, in this great society and great country. That is what I would like uh, 
the young Muslims and the or children and all that to do is to number one to be a part of the community. Don't don't stay away from that. Play your football and soccer and and go with them with the other activities that have got no conflict with your basic principle. And 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 know where you stand, where your but where what your absolute knows for you are. And you do not get any respect from others because you try to emulate them. You try to copy them or so. Uh, so be proud of what you are and, and, and know why you are doing what you are doing. Know your values. And then know what is wrong and try to stay away from that. I mean, if you can do something to prevent that, you should do that. But at least in your heart, you should know that. And, and you don't necessarily, when you feel that the situation is such that you cannot change that, then at least know what is wrong and try not to be a part of that. Where we have professionals, it would be a message to our professionals, is let people know that you are Muslim. And we are very fortunate to have very educated Muslim women uh, in our society currently. And I hope that these are going to be role models for our daughters uh, as they grow up or so. If we can only go back to the real teaching of the Prophet ﷺ, exactly what message he gave in Medina, that's all we need to do. So what are the fundamentals of that message? Forget where you came from. If you were a Muhajir and you came from Mecca, forget it. If you're an Ansar and you're in Medina, forget that also. You're one one family. Establish your five pillars because that is, without it you are lost completely. And work hard to establish your society. And the way you establish your society is by building institutions, by building schools and colleges and hospitals and free clinics and all. And, and, and all of that. So, our first challenge is perhaps breaking the nationalistic barriers that we have and bringing us back to the concept of, hey, we are one big family. That's who we are and that's where our strength is. It has been my lifelong goal that I must strive to be a bridge of understanding uh, between uh, the two worlds. God is the light, God is the light. How great the works of man and the things he makes. How great, then how great the Creator. Though he strives to reach the heavens, he can barely survive the wars of the world he lives in. Yet how many times he's tried himself to immortalize, like his parents before him in the Garden of Eden. But like the sun sets with the call to prayer and surrenders to the night, here too are signs. God is the light everlasting.